Juniper T says, at the end of the day, whether one is Hebrew roots, Torah observant, or whatever everyone wants to call or not call themselves, saying that, yes, you're justified and saved by grace alone through faith, but you still have to keep the law because it's the covenant. This is what I'm hearing from all these groups, including this one. Uh, yeah, I don't, I actually don't understand why that is such a problem for people. Right? I mean, we are covenant members. And so what goes along with... Well, even, even in the Reformed tradition, they're going to say we have to keep the law of God. The question is where... Uh, so the issue is not whether you have to keep God's law or not. It, right. In Reformed circles, it's what define you know get down to the nitty gritty what constitutes as as the law exactly excellent excellent point yeah so ultimately what i hear this person asking is okay so you're saying we have to keep the law and the answer is yeah i think everybody would every christian who's really serious about a relationship with god would say yeah this is the basis of our faith is the covenants uh you know the covenant membership is in fact what we're talking about i i think that covenant membership is actually the gospel message in other words when we look at the Abrahamic covenant, in your seed all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Well, how will they be blessed? Well, go to the next covenant. The D Davidic covenant tells us how they'll be blessed. The Messiah is going to come and the government will rest on his shoulders, right? We see this in Isaiah and, and all, and there will never lack, Judah will never lack someone on the throne. And how, okay, well, how is this possible? How can we actually be in the uh, divine presence of, you know, the presence of the divine, all holy, all glorified God? And the answer is, well, we have to be sinless to be able to do that. We personally can't do that. And so Christ comes to allow us to come back into covenant relationship with God. And what comes along with a covenant? Stipulations. There, there is covenant stipulations. And those covenant stipulations are written on our hearts. So I don't see a problem at all saying, yeah, of course, we have to keep the covenant obligations. Rob's right, though. The, the question that uh, I think is... is I think where the debate comes in is, well, okay, what are the covenant ob obligations? You know, and the, the spirit of Messiah is a covenant keeping spirit. It's, yes. it's fulfills the Torah. It, it um, is a, I mean, when we talk about the spirit of the son that's in our hearts, we have to ask, is that a law? Is that a lawless spirit? Yeah. Not, it's not. Exactly. And so the point, the point here for me is, is that you know, I think let's, let's move just, to, let's shift it just a little bit. I think that if we look into a lot of the reform circles, such as the Presbyterians, you know, the Presbyterians, the, those who hold to a conservative faith of Presbyterian, Presbyterianism, and those who hold to a conservative Baptist faith tend to be what I would call Sabbatarians. Now, granted, they're going to say that the Sabbath has been moved to Sunday. I would disagree with that fact, but the fact still remains that they should be considered Sabbatarians in that, you know, uh, my grandfather would not spend money on Sunday. He, he walked to church. Why did he do that? Because it was the Sabbath. And he, he, for him, he thought that he needed to keep the Sabbath. And if you look at even modern day, now I know R.C. Sprawl is, is passing with the Lord now, but if you look at R.C. Sproul, he talks about the Sabbath day. And what's he talking about? He's talking about Sunday, sure. Same with like John Piper. Right, exactly. I remember reading like Desiring God, and he's quoting like Isaiah 56. And it's just, I'm just like, man, everything here is just like Shabbat, Shabbat. And then that flip, which yeah. I consider as a speck in the eye of our Reformed brothers. I don't consider that a log in their right. eye. I consider that it's just a little speck. And we got to get the log out of our own, own eye so that we can help them with right. the speck that's in their eye. It's yeah. not a, it, it, because, yeah, we're just saying the same thing. I mean, that, that it's a heart that loves God and sees great value and precious uh, of preciousness of God's law. It's right. just there's a there's, admittedly, some historical. No, I know. I, I know. I know what people are going to say. We're going to we're going to get uh, uh, comments on this YouTube video, and people are going to say, "Are you saying that the Sabbath doesn't matter, or are you saying that it doesn't matter if a person worships on Sunday?" Well, first of all, I think a person can worship any day of the week and every day of the week, and they should. We should. We should. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so that's not that. That's not. The I have issue. one day I don't worship. No. <laughs> yeah, but the, but the point is, is no. I I do think that that the day of the Sabbath is specific. I think it's important, and I and I'm not trying to downplay that. 
But what I'm saying is what we're really arguing over here with our Christian brothers and sisters when it comes to this issue of Sabbath observance. Now, there are some who are just going to say it was fulfilled and we don't have to keep it anymore. And now we keep it spiritually. And even this, in my mind, is a a change in... It's not... For those who would say that, I don't think that they're saying that it's abolished. I think that they are saying the application has changed. The application has changed from a Saturday worship to a spiritual worship. Now, right. yeah. I thoroughly disagree with this. I don't want people to think that I don't disagree with this. But at the same time, what we're, we're not necessarily... You know, everybody keeps saying, oh, well, the Christians say that the, the, you know, the mainstream Christian church says the Sabbath is done away with. Yeah, but when we when we really dig into that, what what's actually going on? I think it's a change of application. Now, once again, I disagree with. I have to say this a hundred times because I can already hear the comments being typed. But the point is, is that yes, we do disagree, but it's a disagreement in application and not necessarily a disagreement in the abolishment of God's law. Thank you so much for watching this video. Tell us your thoughts on this subject by leaving a comment in the comment section. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and enable those notifications, and we'll see you in the next video.